Hey, Minnie, what do you think you're doing? I heard you didn't see him off again today. You weren't sleeping when your husband was preparing to go to work, were you? You've been treating him so badly, but you're still his wife, even though you are unbelievably lazy. This can't be happening. My son doesn't need a lazy wife like you. You two should get a divorce. Hello, Candace. That's not true. Today, Evan went to work very early. He left at around 5 a.m., which is much earlier than usual. He said that I don't have to get up early for him. Just because I couldn't send him off to work doesn't mean that I don't see him off every day. So are you saying that Evan told you to stay in bed and you didn't send him off just because it was too early for you? That's an excuse. You are spoiled and lazy. You know what? If you were born in the same year I was, you'd be divorced by now. I won't spoil you. I'll keep an eye on you. As my son's wife, you'd better behave. I won't allow Evan to take pity on you. Duly understood. By the way, Candace, how did you know the time Evan left for work? Such a silly question. I've been talking with him by WhatsApp every day since 5 a.m. Didn't you notice that? So I know when he goes. What time does he leave the house? I know everything. I know everything about my son. You're using WhatsApp? I didn't know about that. You texted Evan that early every day. Do you have any idea how busy he is every morning before work? What are you talking about? Oh, are you jealous? It's just a message. You can look at it quickly and reply within an hour. You don't even know that? You're way behind me. Within an hour? Do you even set a time limit for Evan to reply? I didn't know about that. I'm not surprised at all. This is our family rule. This rule is not new. It's been in place since the day he got his phone. You are his wife, so you must remember that rule. If you don't, we won't tolerate that. Do I have to obey the same rule too? Okay, then I'll try my best. Oh, you only have 10 minutes? Not an hour to reply? It's easy, right? You're just lounging around anyway. Reply within 10 minutes. There's no way you need an hour to do that. What? Not 10 minutes. I'm busy too. Isn't it obvious? Stop messing around with me. You're my son's wife. I'll train you to be a better wife. If you can't do that, you must divorce my son. I don't want my son to stay married to a wife who can't even keep her promises. Oh no, I can't do it every time since I'm not holding my cell phone all day and all night. I won't accept any excuses. This is my decision as Evan's mother. Also, make sure you send Evan off properly tomorrow. Do not use his early work hours as an excuse. Do I make myself clear? Moreover, you must come to my house this evening. This evening? Excuse me, Candace. I have an appointment to take Amy to otolaryngology this evening. That's not so hard. Just take her to the doctor and then come over to my house. It's not that difficult. You're just making excuses again. But I can't leave her inside the house by herself. She's only five and she needs me to stay with her. She's a big hearted girl like you. She'll flatter the adults around her and do something about it. Besides, girls grow up on their own, even if you leave them alone. I told you, didn't I? I'm a firm believer in what I say. Be sure to come here in the evening. Do you understand me? I'll have Evan divorce you if you don't listen to my orders. If you want to stay married to my son, then do as I say. Okay? I'll make it work. I'll be there on time this evening. You should have said that in the beginning. You're a real burden. You know that? You're also not a pretty wife. I wonder what Evan likes about you. Nothing good at all. Hey, I heard you. What are you doing? I heard you made Evan pick up your daughter from the doctor, didn't you? You shouldn't have done that. He's tired from work and you're such a terrible wife to have made him pick up your daughter. I can't believe mothers today can't even take care of their own daughters. You're just taking advantage of Evan to do things on behalf of you. This is unforgivable. You said that your orders are absolute. So I obeyed what you said yesterday. I went to your house to clean up and pick up the food you made for Evan and I. Didn't I? Don't you dare to talk back to me like that. You're just treating Evan as if you were some sort of servant. 
You're just not good at what you do. I'm not treating Evan like a servant. Amy is also his child. It's normal for a married couple to take care of their child together. It can be hard for parents at times, but isn't it fun to raise a child together like that? When I asked Evan to take care of her daughter, he looked very excited and said he was happy to do that. He laughed and said it was the first time he was accompanying Jenny to the hospital. And he also seemed to be enjoying it too. You think he said that seriously? You're such a silly girl. He was just trying to impress you. He couldn't say no because he was afraid of you. The mean wife. You should at least understand that you can't understand people's feelings, can you? You're pathetic. The mean wife. Did Evan say so? He's a very nice boy, unlike you. He's sensitive. So even if he thinks about something, there's no way he'd say it. He won't say how he truly feels. And I'm sure about that. I'm his mother. I know everything I can tell by his words and the tone of his voice that he doesn't like it. His voice? Did you talk to him directly? You said that you were only texting him by WhatsApp, weren't you? Yes, we've been texting each other. He's busy, so I didn't call him. Unlike you, I care about my son. He's too busy to pick up the phone when I call him. You didn't hear his voice, did you? You said something about words. Tone of voice. Shut up. I don't have to hear his voice, but I can get a sense of how Evan feels just by reading his messages. Unlike you, I'm his mother. Our hearts are connected to each other. I see. But this time, we did it. After discussing it between the two of us as a married couple, Evan enjoyed it, so it's already resolved. I thought it was fine since I didn't bother you. Jeez, that's not the issue. You should use your head and think more. If you are a wife, you shouldn't bother your husband. It's something you have to manage on your own. You're depending on your husband for everything. When I was young, I didn't let my husband do anything. We can't let that man bother us. Isn't that right? That's what I call supporting my husband. You should learn more from me. Do you know what I mean? Don't make me say the same thing every time I talk to you. Yes, I'll try to work harder. Do you really understand? You're just trying to run away from problems, aren't you? I'll have to talk with Evan even more about this and have him dump you. I can see right through you. Minnie, I'm so sorry for your loss. If there's anything I can do, please let me know. I had no idea your father had been ill for so many years. I'm sorry that I didn't notice. Thank you for your concern, Candace, about my father. I didn't tell people that he was sick because he wanted to keep that as a secret. The home care nurse took good care of him when he was still alive. My father trusts her a lot, and so do I. She's been a great help to us. Well, glad to hear that. I'm sure your father didn't want you to worry about him. He's a very kind man. I do the same thing. If I were him, I don't want to cause trouble for my son. I want him to always have a smile on his face. So don't beat yourself up, okay? You did a great job. Oh, Candace, thank you very much. I feel much better now that you say that. I haven't been able to go home often, and I haven't been able to let my father see Amy at all. It's been so hard. And I thought there was something more I could have done for him. It's okay. Your father doesn't blame you for what happened to him. On the contrary, I'm sure he cared for you very much. You are his precious daughter, aren't you? Yeah, you're right. I was raised by a very kind father. That's why he left his legacy, didn't he? Legacy? What are you talking about? Well, the big house, the magnificent face of flowers, and the room during the funeral. Also, your father's expensive wristwatch. And there was even a large painting. All of those are luxury brand items, aren't they? All of them belong to you, right? You don't have any siblings and your relatives are estranged. You're the only daughter. So you're going to inherit all of them, am I right? Well, yes, but they're all mementos of my father. Why did you ask that? It's nothing. I'm just checking. Anyway, why don't you get some rest? I think you need some time to rest, both mentally and physically. You can leave the rest to me. I'll take care of your parents' house for you. As you know, I'm good at organizing and cleaning. No, I can't let you do that. I know it takes time, but I'll do it by myself at my own pace. No need to hesitate, Minnie. I'm the only one who can help you now. 
In times like this, you should let me help you. You can count on me since I'm your mother-in-law. No, but there may be things I think are important, and I'm sure that it's difficult for you to choose between them. I told you. From now on, I'm your mother, so leave it to me. I'll make sure to distinguish between important things and things to throw away. No, that's fine. Really, um, please kindly leave me alone. Candace, Candace, are you listening to me? Candace, I'm surprised to hear that you brought a person from the real estate agent to my parents' house. What in the world are you going to do with that house? You can't do whatever you want without permission. Minnie, I've been dreaming about this for a long time. I was going to proceed secretly, but... Dream? A new family house. Oops, I should have kept this as a secret. What do you mean? When my son gets married, I'll live together with him and his wife. Then his wife will take care of all of the house chores. I'll be free from the duty of taking care of my husband, and I'll hang out with some friends to sing, which is my hobby. And when I come home, my favorite meal is ready, and I can take a bath whenever I want. I've been dreaming about that since a long time ago. Wouldn't that be wonderful? That's the best part of having a daughter-in-law. You're not going to do that in my father's house, are you? Oh, no. I wouldn't do it in the house. I'm very picky about my tastes, you know. I want a Western-looking house, which is quite popular recently. I don't want to live in your parents' old-fashioned house. Well, I do like the size of it anyway. Old-fashioned house? How rude. It's a beautiful, historic house. That house was inherited by my father from my grandfather. But it's your house now, isn't it? Well, I'm the owner now. Right? Gosh, I wonder how hard it is to explain things to you. I was trying to say that I own that house. I beg your pardon? Stop kidding me. Of course it's not your house. Because what belongs to the wife of my son belongs to his family. It's obvious. I will decide what I want to do with that house. And you have no choice. Do you really think you're allowed to be selfish like that? I won't allow that to happen. Then you must divorce my son. Seriously, if you won't give me the house, then divorce Evan. I don't want him to stay married to such an uncaring wife. I went to the trouble of giving you the chance for filial piety. And you want to pass up that chance? Full piety? That's right. You don't have parents or relatives anymore, do you? You don't even have a home to go back to. I'm saying that I'll create a home for you to go back to and I'll be your parent. And I'm giving you the chance for filial piety. You should be so grateful that I care for you that much. Oh dear, you were kind enough to talk to me and Amy just because you wanted to do some investigation of my parents' house? Of course not. I did it because I sincerely wanted to support you. You know, I felt sorry for Evan if you guys are depressed. Oh, and I went looking for the deed of the house, but it wasn't at your place. The deed? So that's why you went to my father's house? Didn't you? Well, yes, of course. Giving that house to me is your first act of filial piety. So please give me the deed of that house or change the owner's name to me as soon as possible. Well, even if you don't want to do that, I can ask Evan to destroy the house. I've told you that you have no right to choose, haven't I? I can't believe it. It's insane. Just because you don't like me, you even try to take the inheritance from my father? I don't think a person with kindness will do such a thing. And you're trying to use my inheritance for your own desires? Please, leave my father's belongings and the house alone. You can say whatever you want. I'm not listening to you. I'm going to turn that house into a duplex. That's what I'm going to do. Oh yeah? And you'd better sell or throw away everything in that house as soon as possible. You won't need those in the new house. Well, I'll give you two months to clean up and do the paperwork. Just get it over with and when you're done, let me know at your earliest convenience. I'm bringing in the person from a real estate agency that I'm familiar with and I've already talked to him. See you later. What's going on? Why is there a stranger living in that house? I didn't hear anything about that. I thought you cleared out your house. 
My dream of having a duplex is falling apart because of a stranger. What the hell did you do? Give me an explanation that makes sense. I went over there to help clean the house and there was a stranger in the house. They even changed the locks on the house so he couldn't get in. There were so many security cameras at the house too. Who are those people? Do you know them? Candace, the truth is, the house is no longer mine. Huh? What are you talking about? Who's going to believe that nonsense? That house with your father's legacy. It's important to you, right? You gave it away to strangers just like that. You were always complaining to me whenever I told you that I wanted to do something with that house, weren't you? I didn't give it away. I gave them the house as a token of my gratitude to my father's former home care nurse and her family. A home care nurse and her family? Why? Were you threatened? They are strangers. Are you out of your mind to give the house to strangers? I can't believe it. Why did you do that? The house should have been mine. It was never yours from the start. Are you sure you understood what I've told you before? I don't remember giving it to you. I had no intention of giving it to you from the beginning. Besides, that house is not an inheritance from my father. He gave it to me when I was still alive. When did he give it to you? Does that mean that the house has been yours for a long time? Oh my God. That means you could have built a duplex much earlier. How could you keep such an important thing a secret from me? Did you do it on purpose? Tell me quickly. You are my son's wife. So I'm in charge of managing your property. I can't believe you kept such an important thing from me and Evan. You two really should have a divorce. I don't trust a person like you. I can't stand the thought of living with a liar like you. Divorce Evan right away. By the way, are you also trying to steal my family's property too? Oh my God, Candace, I have nothing to hide. I've told Evan everything. On the contrary, he even knew about my father's condition before I told him about that. Huh? What? Why? Well, at the hospital, my father asked him to take care of me. He also said we can do whatever we want with the house. He said we don't have to keep it forever. We can sell it or whatever. So me and Evan thought about it and decided about what would be the best thing to do. We decided to give the house to the home care nurse who had kindly taken care of my father for several years instead of us. But when we tried to give it to her as a gift, she refused. So we are renting it to her now with a term of 10 years. So after 10 years, that house will be mine? My son did a really great job. No, the agreement was that after 10 years, the house would belong to the home care nurse. She agreed to that. Oh no, then that house, my dream, will be completely in someone else's hands. Please don't misunderstand me. I've told you many times from the beginning, that house doesn't belong to you. It belongs to me. What I do with that is up to me. Evan knows that. You think you are allowed to be so selfish? Even though you are my son's wife. With whose permission can you do such a thing? Divorce Evan right away. I can't take it anymore. Candace, please stop being so selfish. Were you even listening to what I told you? Besides, Evan agreed to this decision. Listen to me carefully. I'm gonna say it to you one more time. I already discussed with Evan everything about renting that house to someone and giving it away after 10 years. That's because Evan is just being nice to you. Then he can't even say what he wanted to say. He couldn't disobey you, so here we are. The evil wife. Are you trying to manipulate my son just like that? I'm on my way over there now. Call Evan and tell him to come home. I can't wait even for one more minute. Call him? It's still noon. Evan is at work right now. Don't be so selfish. I can't call him out for something like this. It will just interfere with his work. It's too much trouble. If you can't, I'll call him. What a useless woman you are. You just don't want to call Evan, right? That's not going to happen. Please, don't do that. You really are annoying. Why are you bothering your own son? Huh? What did you say? I'm his mother, you know. I just want to let my son know, since this is an important thing. Children listen to their parents. Gosh, Candace, it's not important at all. It's not even life-threatening, is it? Please, 
leave your son alone. In the first place, it's not an emergency. And you're calling Evan. It will cause trouble for the company he works for. They'll just think that you're insane. You'll embarrass your son too. If he doesn't answer, I'll just go to his office. I have to talk to him quickly and kick you out of the office. Going to his office? I think it's useless. Evan is not there. Well, I shouldn't tell you about this, but it looks like I have no choice. He actually resigned from that company years ago. What? What do you mean years ago? Resigned? No way. That's impossible. Yes. You used to go to the company where Evan worked three times a week. I heard that you went there to have lunch with him or to have dinner together after work. I heard that you didn't allow him to work overtime. That's why you were sitting at the entrance of the company, right? Hey, what the? What's wrong with that? I wasn't interrupting his work. I just wanted to be with, together with my son. I have to look out for him. I need to make sure he's doing his job and not being bullied by his colleagues. If you were a parent, you'd do the same thing. You might think that it's the right thing to do, but for most people, that's crazy. Do you know his boss at work warned him about that a lot? Even if I told you in a roundabout way, you didn't listen to me. Everyone was laughing at Evan, and I felt sorry for him. I don't think you, who only cares about yourself, even noticed. That can't be true. Evan didn't like me? His colleagues were laughing at him? It's just jealousy, isn't it? They envied him because his mother was taking very good care of him. Do you really think so? Do you have any idea about how Evan really feels? What about now? Evan hasn't replied to your text, has he? Maybe he's not even reading it. I heard from Evan that he's been reading all of your messages but didn't reply. Oh, but... You were spying on him by checking the time when he read your messages. And I heard you even tried to secretly put a GPS on his phone. What? How did you find out about that? Because Evan is working as a smartphone app developer right now. Oh, no. He knows. So he'll turn off his phone when he rides the subway. That way, you won't know where his company is. How much trouble are you going to put your son through? He was lamenting that if he did a bad job of blocking incoming calls or something like that, you would even come to the house? But that's all over today. We're at our limit. What? What do you mean by that? We've decided to sell the money from renting the house and the things in my father's house and migrate. Migrate? Where? I didn't hear you talk about that. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you anyway. I don't want you to spy on us. Wait, please don't take him away from me. He's all I have. I beg you. That's for Evan to decide. It's not for me to say, but this environment is not good for you and Evan. I don't want to. I don't want to leave him. We are meant to be together. I shudder just thinking about getting separated from my son. We've always hated what you've done to us. You know that, but we've been holding back for a long time. Evan is kind, so we couldn't tell his precious mother about how he really feels. I know that too, so I've been trying to treat you nicely. But we were fed up with your selfish behavior, and we've had enough. You despise our daughter and keep demanding me to get a divorce every day. You even tried to sell my father's house without my permission. Do you think you are allowed to do whatever you want just because you're my mother-in-law? I don't think so. You are so selfish. I can't take it anymore. We are under a lot of stress because of you. I'm sorry that I went too far. So give me a second chance. Give me a chance to apologize to Evan. I need him. I told you, didn't I? Evan is the one who's decided. Anyway, are you telling me that you'll only apologize to Evan? You're the kind of person who never wavers until the end, aren't you? I'm sorry. Enough is enough. I have a plane to catch, so I gotta go. Thank you for your support. I won't contact you ever again. Goodbye. Please, wait. After moving to a new place and settling down, I received a call from my father-in-law. He said that his wife, who had been so aggressive, had become quiet and tended to stay at home without a trace. 
Whenever the phone rang, she would be excited since she thought that it's from her son, but then she would be disappointed since it wasn't. It seems that being separated from his son was the most difficult thing for her to endure. Rather than taking care of her son, she must have been completely dependent on him. My father-in-law has told me that he will take care of his wife. It may be rough therapy, but we are not going to contact her so that she can properly reflect on what she has done. We then bought a house in a rural area with the money we gained from working hard so that our family of three can make a fresh start. We are busy working together, helping each other out, but right now we are living our happiest life. And if one day my mother-in-law realizes her mistake, we may meet her again. However, it's not possible yet. Well, I don't plan to see her for now until she properly reflects on her mistakes.